Hey guys, I promised I'd make a Vet Dread Cell Hard Mode tips video, so here it is. I'm gonna make a video for each boss, so this first episode is gonna be on the twins, Lilinar and Torlacil. To make the video shorter, I'm gonna assume that you guys know the basic mechanics from non-hard mode. If you guys don't, that's okay. I'll leave links in the description to some helpful guides that show you the basics. But anyways, let's get started. At the start, basically, you want to keep hitting the boss until his individual health hits 80%. If you guys remember, the boss will spawn his own color Atros at 90 and 80%, so we stop damage to wait for the Atros to come in. We also do this to avoid pushing him to 65%, where he'll do the teleport mechanic. There's two ways you can stop damage. Either the person with the bubble drops it, or they drag the bubble out so it doesn't touch the boss. Once the Atros are in, the bubble is back in group and we nuke everything. The off tank will hold the wrong color Atros off to the side. Also, I forgot if this is only for hard mode, but the bosses do spawn these things here. We like to call them weapons. When they die, everyone should either block or roll the wave that comes out. If the boss spawns one pretty early, you can send one or two people to go kill it. But if the boss spawns one late, like right before the teleport mechanic, then it's probably better to kill it afterwards. Anyways, push the boss to 65% individual health, and he'll start to do his teleport mechanic. This part is pretty simple. Usually teams like to have 4 groups of 2 DPS go to one of the 4 teleports. One person grabs the bubble, and the other person bashes. Also, when grabbing bubbles during this, watch out for any weapons. Right here, if I grab the bubble right on top of the teleport, it would have blown up the weapon and the bubble. There's two ways people do teleports. You can either use quadrants or have one person call out where each teleport is. The way quadrants works is you label each corner top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right, and assign each bubble team to a corner. Quadrants are easier, but one issue with this strat is you'll sometimes run into something like this. It's not game over when this happens, but it can cause confusion, and if there's late reactions, it's probably a wipe. The more reliable strat is to have one person call out each teleport. It's pretty easy to do if you watch the boss. He makes really obvious hand movements. In this case, if I was calling it out, I would say back left, back right, front right, front left. Once all that's over, the other twin will come down and it's the exact same thing except he teleports at 70% instead of 65% like his other twin. Once you enter double boss phase, there's two main ways your team can do this. Either y'all split the team into two teams of six for each boss, or you stack most of the group on one side and then switch to the other boss when the first boss gets low. There's a few variations to the second strat. You can add a second healer or one DPS to the other side so they can help swap bubbles easier. Both strats are really good, but the group stack strat is going to be a little bit better. There is actually a third strat where you stack both bosses together, but it's not recommended unless you're score pushing. You might have noticed I said to have a small gap between the two bubbles. This is because if the gap is too big, weapons are most likely to spawn in the middle. This can cause problems when we need to drag a bubble across, which we'll see later. Starting from when both bosses are down, if your team can kill the bosses in less than 3 minutes, you can ignore all the weapons unless it spawns between bubbles. If your team is too slow, then kill a few weapons and then ignore the rest. Anyways, while in this phase you basically hit the boss while designated people juggle the fire and ice bubbles, in this video, me and Godspeed juggle the fire bubble. We would hold the bubble until 20-25 to 25 stacks and then call the other person to take it off. It starts doing a lot of damage to you so don't hold it for too long. You get 1 stack per second of holding the bubble, and there's a 20 second cooldown for grabbing the bubble again after you drop it. So swapping bubbles at 20 stacks is perfect. Sometimes though, the boss from the other side will teleport over and stun everyone, like right here. I can't grab fire bubble again because now I'm on cooldown, and Godspeed's still on cooldown, so we need a third person to grab it for us. I'll usually just call out, someone grab fire. That stun mechanic is one of the hard mode mechanics, but it's pretty easy. 
It's not necessary, but if the bubble person has any kind of gap closing skill, like Stampede, they can free the other side faster. Also on hard mode, two pairs of people will get fire and ice rinse instead of one pair on normal. So just call out where you're going. In this case, I'll say fire door. This is a normal mechanic, but the last thing I want to mention is in the double boss phase, the bosses make each tank put down five AOEs that really hurt. Usually the tanks will line them on the outside like this, but if they're good at timing them, they can stack them like this. I'll show you a clip from my good friend Bove. Alright, that's it for this boss. I hope you guys find it helpful. I'll be putting out more videos for the Reef Guardian and Teleria soon, so keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I'll see y'all later.